a very good morning to my dear teachers and colleagues today through the cgr i would like to share our department's experience with a relatively common genetic skeletal disorder osteogenesis imperfecta so osteogenesis imperfecta is a disorder which has a high a degree of phenotypic variability and these images depict the wide range of variability in presentation right from intrauterine to neonatal to childhood to adulthood period with varying degree of bony deformity this disorder which is phenotypically heterogeneous is equally heterogeneous genotypically and this aspect will be covered in detail in upcoming slides the classic features include blue sclera recurrent fractures bony deformity dentinogenesis imperfecta and post pubertal hearing loss and the varying severity of these features along with the radiological findings in a large cohort of patients with osteogenesis imperfecta were seen by dr silens and this phenotypic classification was then categorized and oa has then been classified into four major types from type 1 to type 4 and the mode of inheritance was speculated based upon the family history eventually the gene for osteogenesis imperfecta was identified in 1983 and 86 as col1 genes and hence an autosomal dominant mode of inheritance was labeled rare familial occurrences were then thought to be due to gonadal mosaicism however it nearly took 23 long years to disprove this theory when the first gene for autosomal recessive osteogenesis imperfecta was identified in a highly consanguineous marriage and this gene was crtap gene hence it was concluded that 85 to 90 percentage of oa were due to variants in col1 genes whereas the rest were due to autosomal recessive genes following the discovery of crtap gene other numerous autosomal recessive genes were identified in quick succession and currently we have a total of 23 genes which includes 17 autosomal recessive genes and with the discovery of these genes the molecular pathology of osteogenesis imperfecta was well understood that apart from mutation in type 1 collagen genes even defects in post translational modification of type 1 collagen as well as defect in osteoblast macerations were responsible for osteogenesis imperfecta and sooner a molecular classification was devised by folino and marini group and this was based on the differential different function of these genes on bone homeostasis So in 2009 when hardly three autosomal recessive genes were known we began a molecular journey with the first icmr funded project on osteogenesis imperfecta and we primarily concentrated on the col1 genes so we enrolled a total of 35 indian patients with clinically diagnosed uh, who had clinical features of osteogenesis imperfecta then we proceeded with the herculean task of designing primers for all the 51 52 exons of the col a1 and col2 gene and then we proceeded with the sanger sequencing for each of these exons in all these 35 indian patients and we could identify mutation in 25 of them in remaining 10 of them where we did not identify mutation it will uh, six of them belong to consanguineous family thus depicting autosomal thus speculating autosomal recessive as a common disorder <laughs> out of the total variants identified about half of them were novel and 80 percentage sort of the total variants identified half were novel and 80 percentage of the pathogenic mutations were in glycine residue which is one of the important factor determining the severity of the disorder and also there were 55 non pathogenic variants that is polymorphisms and thus we contributed to the ethnic based specific population database with considerable number of unsolved cases we uh, proceeded with our effort in identifying the other disease uh, the other oi disease causing genes so one such case example is this 18 year old twin sisters who came to us with clinical diagnosis consistent with osteogenesis imperfecta and these are the radiographic images which showed severe bony deformity and they were born out of third degree consanguineous marriage and had a similar history in an elder sibling who succumbed to this illness and we did not identify any variant in the col1 genes so considering an autosomal recessive gene we adopted this homozygosity based strategy to identify this gene so uh, due to uh, 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 the practice of uh, uh, marrying within the caste groups in india many autosomal recessive disorders the affected individuals will have homozygous variant and such phenomena is seen not only in consanguineous marriage but also in non consanguineous indian families due to the effect of inbreeding 
So this image depicts that uh, this is a particular individual who has a mutated allele in a heterozygous form. And through the single common ancestors, this mutated allele will be transmitted to multiple members through different generations. And finally, an individual can be affected due to homozygous, this particular homozygous variation, which he has inherited from his her closely related parents. And it is not just this mutated allele, but also the region adjacent to this mutated allele can, uh, will have homozygosity. That is, they are identical by descent from this common ancestor. And these homozygosity stretches around these homozygous mutations can be detected by a technique called cytogenetic microarray. So we employed this technique to identify the disease-causing genes, and we selected seven consanguineous families for this. So the first case, through microarray, we identified large regions of uh, homozygosity, and then we looked for the candidate genes that can cause OI in these particular homozygous regions. And then we could narrow down to this particular already reported autosomal recessive gene, CRTAP, and since this particular gene has only seven exons, so we Sanger sequenced uh, after designing primers for all the seven exons and could finally identify a homozygous nonsense variant in both the twin sisters and parents were found to be carriers. Till then, he, they, these individuals are one of the oldest living uh, individuals in India with CRTAP mutations as majority of these null mutations are lethal and generally uh, uh, patients expire in the early childhood period. So the same strategy was applied in remaining six individuals and we identified variants in PPIB serpin F1 genes and in three individuals where we could not identify any variant by this technique. So we uh, employed exome sequencing, which was then available clinically, though it was costly, but was affordable on research basis. And we identified uh, a, a variant in Colvin A2 gene in one of these patients. So this explaining that autosomal uh, dominant variants is still possible in some consanguineous families. And the remaining two variants where we did not get any uh, uh, any um, variant, we analyzed the exome data, reanalyzed it. And since the coverage of one of the exon of WNT1 gene, which is another autosomal recessive OI causing gene, so we did Sanger sequencing directly for that exon 2, and then we confirmed a 12 base pair deletion in this particular case. However, one case remains still unsolved. While osteogenesis imperfect as a clinically diagnosable condition, such massive efforts in identifying a genotype is important for various reasons. The one such reason is the marked intrafamilial and interfamilial variability. Uh, and hence, it is quite difficult to predict the genotype from the phenotype and vice versa. The only exception is type 5 osteogenesis imperfecta, which is due to IFIT M5 gene. So they have this classic radiological picture of hyperplastic callus and calcification of the interosseous membrane. So this radiological picture will hint us that the underlying genotype is IFIT M5 gene. But even in that particular case, there were few individuals uh, with type 5 OI who had a deviant response to the standard bisphosphonate therapy that is given in OI. That is, sometimes there can be worsening of callus hyperplasia uh, after bisphosphonate treatment, uh, thereby causing severe restriction of movement and worsening of disability. So even in a straightforward case, it is sometimes important to identify the genotype so that the treatment can be tailored for the particular patient. And the second reason is not all childhood fractures are due to osteogenesis imperfecta. There are numerous OI mimickers, and they can, these uh, disorders can mimic right from type 2 lethal perinatal osteogenesis imperfecta to other types of OI. And hence, genetic diagnosis is pivotal for the correct diagnosis and appropriate treatment options. So because of these reasons, we continued our research in osteogenesis imperfecta. And simultaneously, there was a surge in uh, papers especially from uh, South Asian population and uh, where, they have, uh, where they have mentioned that the contribution from autosomal recessive genes were in fact higher than it was previously thought. So the contribution from autosomal recessive component was approximately 25 to 50 percentage as opposed to 10 percentage that was previously thought. So this inspired us to proceed further and then we continued with our second ICMR funded project on osteogenesis imperfecta primarily to study the phenotypes and genotypes of autosomal recessive OI. Though our primary goal was to study autosomal recessive phenotypes, but we enrolled all the patients who were clinically diagnosed with osteogenesis imperfecta. So this project is currently underway, and we have a total of 54 patients still now uh, for whom we have the genotypic data. And here, the non-dominant forms of OI contributed around 44.5% similar to previous published literature. 
And amongst the autosomal dominant co cohort, there were few consanguineous families. And uh, as si similar to our previous study, glycine substitution was found in 80% of this population. And amongst the autosomal and X-linked recessive cohort, we had consanguinity in 50% of these families and 87.5% percent, uh, percentage were homozygous variants. So this pie chart depicts the varying contribution of different autosomal recessive OI genes. And this bar graph represents that almost majority of these variants were novel and not reported previously. Then we went upon and studied the phenotypic spectrum of these autosomal recessive osteogenesis imperfecta, and this will be illustrated by few case examples. The first case, which is at the severe end of the spectrum, we have this eight-year-old male uh, who had his first presentation in the intrauterine period and has severe stunting. And uh, he was put on bisphosphonate therapy from three months of age, though he had very less number of fractures pre and post bisphosphonate therapy, but his deformity was out of proportion to such fracture episodes. And following bisphosphonate therapy, there was mild improvement in his bone mineral density when compared to his previous value. And when we did the genotype, we identified a homozygous missense variant in serpent H1 gene. So this was a second case, a five-year-old female who had her first fracture at birth and her height again was uh, suggestive of severe shunting. And she was put on bisphosphonate therapy from uh, one year of age. And then this showed just a partial response that there was a reduction in fracture episodes from 10 to almost three per year. And her bone mineral density also showed just very uh, minor improvement in uh, where uh, the <clears throat> BMD at four years age was at minus six standard deviation. So when we perform uh, the genotypic analysis, and this is the integrated genome view viewer picture where, there, where we can picture, um, where we can view the genomic variants following NGS. But this identified two nucleotide substitutions along with it a five nucleotide insertion in close succession. So in order to solve this puzzle, we went ahead and confirmed this with Sanger sequencing. And we identified this particular uh, nucleotide substitution, which is a nonsense variant. But along with it, the five nucleotide insertion, which was shown in NGS, was actually a deletion insertion and not a pure insertion. Hence, through this case, we would like to emphasize that sometimes NGS results may need complementary Sanger confirmation for accurate interpretation. So this case is at the milder end of the spectrum, where a four-year-old female who had her first fracture at one year of age, and her height is not that bad, where standard deviation is at minus 2.9, and she was started on bisphosphonate from one year of age. Till then, she had four fractures, but following the therapy, she did not have any fracture, and there was only mild uh, bony deformity. And genotyping her, we identified a homozygous missense uh, variant in the serpent F1 gene. So when we collected all these fi phenotypic findings of autosomal recessive genes and compared it with the phenotypic findings of autosomal dominant genes, we found that the deformity of long bones were quite severe in the autosomal recessive group, and also the response to bis bis bisphosphonates were quite variable, were in, in fact partial in majority of these individuals in autosomal recessive group. And also when we tried to compare the phenotypic differences within these autosomal uh, recessive group of genes, uh, the phenotypic findings which we included were height, that is the degree of uh, stunting, and then the number of uh, deformed bones that is in different groups, and then whether the patient is ambulatory or not ambulatory, and then their response to uh, bisphosphonates. So based on this preliminary observation, we graded these genes according to the, uh, according to the phenotypic severity it causes. So here we have serpent H1 at the most severe end of the spectrum, whereas uh, relatively less severe end of the spectrum, we have the CRTAP and FKBP10 gene. Then we also compared our cohort with another uh, pub, uh, Indian cohort uh, published by Rox et al. in 2018. And uh, the sample size and percentage contribution of consanguinity is almost same. And the autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive contribution are also nearly same. And, uh, uh, and this also shows that nearly 45 to 50 percentage were autosomal recessive variants. And then we compared the, uh, only the autosomal recessive group from, uh, from our study with other uh, groups, including our Chinese cohort, which was published in 2020. And we can see that P3H1 gene is, was the most commonest, uh, was the commonest gene identified in our group, whereas it was WNT1 in both these groups. And also comparing these two groups, we had more diverse set of genes when compared to these two groups. So in addition, we also would like to present few uh, interesting secondary findings. 
So regarding the bisphosphonate therapy, currently uh, we have 21 patients who are on regular zolandronate therapy with a mean duration uh, being around 4.3 years. So good response that is in the form of no fractures and improvement in bone mineral density was seen in 11, 11 of these individuals, whereas partial response was seen in nine of them. Though uh, there were a partial response with some degree of improvement in bone mineral density in all of them, and there were no major adverse side effects except for minor flu-like symptoms. And next, we, would, uh, we intend to look at the bone mineral density in the carriers, that is, parents of pro uh, probands with autosomal recessive osteogenesis imperfecta. So this was based on our observation that there were numerous uh, studies which quoted that uh, for autosomal recessive causing genes, these genes in the heterozygous form can cause late onset osteoporosis. Hence, we uh, this is in the preliminary stage, but we have enrolled three families here. After ruling out vitamin D deficiency and other metabolic causes, we uh, performed bone mineral density in them. And as we can see in this particular bar graph, that in w, especially in W and T1 gene, both the parents were found to be having a low bone mineral density. So this is still in the preliminary stage, and we are enrolling further uh, patients for this kind of observation. And another aspect we looked into it is to identify uh, the reason for marked intrafamilial variability in autosomal dominant OI. So uh, that is the that is phenotypic variability within the uh, family uh, within the same family uh, in different family members. This is a known phenomenon, but the cause for such variability is uh, is not known still now. So what we uh, so this is one such family where this is a proband who presented to us with uh, first fracture at six months of age and had multiple episodes of fracture and uh, with severe deformity and he's currently non-ambulatory. But this is his elder uh, sibling who's 19 years old, had his first fracture at five years of age and had uh, three episodes of fracture till now with a milder deformity. Whereas his own father, who is 40, 44 years right now, hardly had any, uh, hardly had one or two fractures, and he's having short stature, but he does not have any deformity. A similar variation in phenotype can be seen in other family members. In generally, in this condition, we do uh, whole exome sequencing for or exome sequencing for one of, for the proband, and then the variant which is identified in him will be looked for in other affected family members to prove the causality. But here we perform whole exome sequencing for the father and then this 19 year old elder sibling as well as the proband. And then we identified a known pathogenic splicing variant in col one a 2 gene, which is a causative factor in all of them. But in addition, we also identified a missense variant in an autosomal recessive gene that is P3H1, but in a, homo in a heterozygous form. And this was seen only in the proband and elder sibling and not in the father. So we speculated that this could be one of the factor for such phenotypic variability. And when we looked at all the exome reports of uh, the OI individuals, almost 50 percentage of these individuals carried another rare autosomal, uh, another rare OI causing gene variant in a heterozygous form. So those, those is very uh, early to conclude, but we are currently looking at the effect of uh, such variants on the phenotypic variability. So though not always 100% successful, we still have few unsolved mysteries. So like this particular case, a 17-year-old female born of non-consanguineous marriage who had multiple episodes of fractures and severe bony deformity can also look at the severe lung, restrictive lung disease because of which she used to have frequent respiratory uh, tract infections. And this is another patient who was five years old, born of third degree consanguineous marriage, who had his first fracture at birth uh, with almost four episodes, four fractures per year and having a poor response to bisphosphonate. So whole exome sequencing in them did not identify any pathogenic variants in OI genes or other OI mimickers. So we have done whole genome sequencing in them in order to identify any intronic variant or other complex rearrangements in OI causing gene and the result is awaited. So while research is on one side, we also perform routinely uh, prenatal testing for uh, these individuals. And majority of these families after pre-test counseling, they opt for uh, prenatal testing and this in turn would help them in uh, making a good reproductive decision. Whereas on the other end of the spectrum, we do have patients, so like example, this gentleman who had multiple family members affected with osteogenesis imperfecta, including his own uh, elder son. And then he came to us when his wife was pregnant in the first trimester, and he harbored a known pathogenic uh, variant in col one a one gene. So after explaining the risk of recurrence of 50% and then associated complications, but he did not opt for prenatal testing. But however, the, uh, the autonomy of the patient was respected and prenatal testing was not performed. 
and we also had an osteogenesis imperfecta meet in 2018 where all these patients were assessed by two stalwarts of pediatric orthopedics, that is Dr. Hitesh and Dr. Shah Alam Khan. So they personally uh, uh, evaluated all these patients and then provided management counseling. So I would like to conclude with this slide where we can see all these individuals with uh, osteogenesis imperfecta where, who proved that the disability is not a limitation and uh, have reached greater heights in the respective fields. This includes our own patient from uh, Kanpur, uh, popularly known as the Butler sisters, who have never let the disability come in the way of achieving their dreams. So they excel in the field of arts and music and they have received numerous awards for the same. Thank you.